Michigan. Hi there. Come on in. If you're interested in seeing the biggest of the big game taken in Michigan in 1989, you've got the right show. In fact, this show is in two parts. Now, we'll hear the stories from the hunters who took the biggest turkeys and bears this past season in this half-hour episode. And the biggest white-tailed deer and elk are in the half-hour segment we call our 1989 Big Buck Finals. That half-hour has either just been telecast on this station or it's yet to come up. But there's no doubt Michigan's deer herd is stronger, healthier, and bigger than ever. We have definitive proof. So stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's time for another Big Buck Special. White-tailed deer are America's number one big game animal, and Michigan is a leading white-tailed deer state. We have trophy bucks from the southern farmlands to the northern woodlands, but trophy bucks aren't what make deer our number one big game animal. Michigan's 750,000 deer hunters take to the woods because deer are large, they're plentiful, they're challenging to hunt, but mainly, they're very good to eat. After the admiration of the antlers at buck poles, the deer are either taken to butchers for processing or the hunters skin and cut up their deer themselves, producing 35 to 40 pounds of boneless, nutritious, trimmed, tasty venison. The largest bucks, not in body size, but in antler size, find their way to taxidermy shops where their heads are mounted in lifelike poses. When a buck is mounted, only the head is used and the meat is all butchered for food but only a relatively small number of hunters bag bucks big enough for their walls as well as their freezers. Each year we hold our hunting and fishing awards banquets that draw over 1,200 people. After the meals, the hunters and anglers bring their trophies on stage where they receive their Stroh's Hunting and Fishing Awards. This awards program isn't a contest. There aren't any big prizes or jackpots, but there is a recognition that goes to the qualifiers. Each receives an embroidered patch that identifies them as award winners, and they each get signed certificates. The names and trophy data are printed in the annual Stroh's Trophy Book, which is a part of our annual Fish and Wild Game Classics Recipe Book. And each qualifier receives a year's membership in the Outdoors Club, which includes a subscription to the Outdoor Digest magazine. And some of the award winners who come to the banquets have a chance to tell their stories on TV. Well, it's the first one I've ever shot. <laughs> the first one for you. The first birdie's ever shot, 24 pounder, right at the top of the trophy book. You son of a gun, you. <laughs> this pattern is repeated many times each season. A first timer bags a trophy. In this case, Jim Bretternitz from Chelsea did it on his first turkey hunt, a gobbler that ranked tops in the state for 1989, taken in Washtenaw County with an 11 and a half inch beard. This tom weighed a whopping 24 pounds, six ounces. Puts it right at the top of the heap in the turkey division with our Stroh's Awards. But what happens when a hunter hunts for years and years, say seven years in a row, and doesn't bag a turkey? In Kevin Stewart's case, he wasn't trigger happy at all. In fact, he became more cautious than ever. I seen seven times. Seven times came in and I just didn't pull the trigger. Seven times. You mean after seven years, you finally saw seven times and you didn't pull the trigger for what possible reason? Well, I didn't want to uh, take a bad shot. You know, I wanted a good, clean shot. <laughs> so I waited. Waited and waited and waited. Well, congratulations. That paid off. Got that story straight. A true sportsman waiting for his best chance for a clean kill, and it paid off for Kevin Stewart from Warren, a 22-pounder with a 10-inch beard taken in Aranac County at 2 in the afternoon, a time when too many turkey hunters give up for the day. And speaking of giving up, how about an afternoon nap in the turkey blind while your buddy is videotaping from a short distance away? Fred? Uh, this is what you get after you fall asleep and your buddy's filming you. Oh, yeah? Oh, this is my kind of story. It's John and I do that all the time. On Saturday, I fell asleep, and uh, unknowns to me, my buddy was filming me. And while he was filming, nine times worked between him and me while I'm laying on the ground sleeping. <laughs> Next morning, though, I went out and uh, I put the icing on the cake. No kidding. Or else I'd have been harassed for the rest of my life. <laughs> so you had no idea that those toms were there? None. None at all until I saw it on his video cam. Who, what woke you up? Uh, I got too warm sleeping. <laughs>
Heck of a story. Well, congratulations. I can relate to that one. That was Ray Schultz from Millington, who may have snoozed through a bigger one, but his Iosco County gobbler with a ten and a quarter inch beard taken in late October. Well, this was definitely the turkey of his dreams. Wild turkeys can be difficult to hunt. They're so wary. But like everything, if you're in the right spot at the right time, it seems easy. Turkeys are hunted in the spring by calling, trying to entice the big gobblers into the sound of a hen ready to mate. The calling is what provides the suspense and the challenge. But one species of big game in Michigan that provides suspense all by itself is the black bear. It's not a dangerous animal. Well, unless, of course, it gets mad, which is always a possibility. Longbow shooter Ron LeClaire, who you've seen at our shooting shows, knows the thrill of bear hunting using the same type of equipment as the Indians used several centuries ago. Uh, I took this bear in Ontario last spring. Uh, what makes him kind of special is I took him with an all-wood Osage longbow and a wooden arrow. Uh, nothing real exciting about bear hunting except watching... Uh, pile of rotten meat, you know, but uh, <laughs> usually... Nothing exciting about bear hunting. You can't tell me that. I don't care how long you've hunted bear, that, when, the, when it gets that the hair doesn't stand up on the back of your neck. When, when it gets exciting in. is when you see that bear start to come in and circle the bait. Then it, then it starts getting exciting. I think uh, the main thing about bear hunting that everybody ought to remember, especially hunting with a bow, is to wait for that opportunity when that bear gives you the perfect shot. Wait till he gets on the bait, gets committed to the bait, gives you the perfect shot, and then make the perfect shot. And I got lucky. Other than that, you have the bear hunter's nightmare, a bad shot at a bear at close range. Right, right. And then, uh, then you got to track him. Or he tracks you, <laughs> yeah. one of the yeah. two. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Ron LeClaire with a long bow, 300-pound black bear. And here's the guy who took the biggest bear entered in our Stroh's Hunting Awards during 1989, Randy Lee from South Boardman, who took a 500-pounder in Barraga County. Well, I got him opening night about 8 o'clock, and uh, he come in, come in real good. One shot, uh, went about 50 yards with the bow. Have you hunted bear before with the bow? Yeah, uh, this is my third year bear hunting, my first bear. Can you describe how it feels to be sitting there with a bow and arrow over a pile of bait as it's getting dark? That's another exciting part about bear hunting, getting out of there when it's dark. Real exciting. That is real exciting. It's the only thing that you can compare it to is when you were about eight years old and you're down the basement and you realize there might be monsters. Yeah, right. It's about the only thing. Well, that's a congratulations, that third year of bear hunting. Yeah, thank you very much. Super job. That, with a bow. Bow hunting can be very effective, as you can imagine. But bow hunters all get butterflies in their stomachs when they're waiting for a bear as the sun goes down. We're covering the antlered big game, deer and elk, in the other half hour of tonight's series. But before we finish this segment, let's go to the interview that we'd normally have in our regular trophy book. This is one of the biggest fish caught in the state of 1989. Let's let Lonnie Spiegel from Flushing tell the tale of his walleye trip to Saginaw Bay's hot pond. Well, my brother and I was up walleye fishing, and uh, the carp were biting much better than the walleye were. And we had caught several carp, oh, anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds or better. And I hooked into this one, and I knew it was something bigger than what I'd been catching. It was the largest carp that I have ever caught, so I took it home and get it weighed, see what it weighed. Had to go to three grocery stores before I found one with a scale big enough to weigh it. <laughs> and it weighed 40 pounds, right on the money. 40 pound carp, 36 inches long. You gotta be proud of that one. Well, it's a big fish. I guess anybody should be proud of a big fish they catch, regardless of what kind it is. How long did it take to haul that in? Uh, probably 20 minutes. A big fish that battles like a salmon, why doesn't it get more respect? Well, we'll give it respect tonight, along with the other trophies and outdoor news, so stay tuned. 